Operating a distillation system involves maintaining an equilibrium or balance between the rising vapor and the falling liquid in the column. One aspect of operation that can affect this balance is the system's feed rate. The feed rate is the rate at which feed mixture is pumped to a column. The flow of feed to a column can affect the quantity and quality of overhead product and bottoms product. For that reason, an optimum feed rate is normally determined mathematically based on system equipment and the materials being processed. An optimum feed rate is often determined when a system is designed and may be modified according to the mixture being distilled. However, a range within which the system functions efficiently is usually specified as well. For example, a system may have an optimum feed rate of 100 gallons per minute and an operating range of 80 to 120 gallons per minute. The way the feed rate is kept within the specified range depends on the system. In this system, a flow controller compares the rate of flow in the feed line to a preset value. If the feed rate needs to be adjusted, the controller signals a control valve to open or close. A distillation system functions most efficiently when its feed rate is kept within an established range. When the feed rate is regulated by a flow controller, slight variations in the rate can be expected. However, large variations can greatly affect a column's performance. If a system's feed rate is too high, overloading can occur. Overloading is a condition in which the vapor rising up a column is impeded by the liquid flowing down the column. For example, if the feed rate for this trade column is too high, the liquid will back up in the downcomers and build up on the trays. The increase in hydrostatic pressure restricts the vapor rising through the liquid. If overloading continues, more and more liquid backs up and the rising vapor becomes severely blocked. This condition is known as flooding. While excessive liquid flow from a higher than normal feed rate is one cause of flooding, there are other causes. For example, a higher than normal reflux rate can have the same basic effect. Reflux is condensed overhead product that's pumped back to the top of a column. If there's too much reflux, the level of liquid on the trays can rise, increasing the hydrostatic pressure of the liquid and restricting or blocking the rising vapor. A column can also overload or flood if the temperature of the reflux is too low. A very low reflux temperature can cause too much vapor to condense in the column, which can overload the trays and impede the rising vapor. Excessive liquid flow down a column can cause overloading and flooding, but trays can also become overloaded because of excessive vapor flow up the column. One of the most common causes of excessive vapor flow is too high a temperature in the bottom of the column. If the temperature in the bottom of the column is too high, too much liquid is vaporized and the vapor flow rate up the column increases. The increased vapor flow forces liquid up the column, flooding trays in an upward progression. If the problem continues, the pressure of the impeded vapor can increase to a point where it forces liquid out of the top of the column. This condition is sometimes called puking. When the vapor pressure is relieved, liquid flows back down the column and the pressure buildup begins again. The surging of liquid up and down a column can sometimes damage internal structures of the column. Besides the causes we've described, overloading and flooding can also occur when vapor and liquid flows become restricted by scale buildup or damage to bubble caps or packing. But regardless of the cause, operators must be able to identify the problem so that it can be eliminated. A number of indicators can be used to identify overloading or flooding, including column pressures and temperatures. The buildup of liquid can cause the pressure below the flooding point to rise. So the differential pressure across the column will increase. Also, since heat from the reboiler is basically blocked from rising, the temperature at the bottom of the column may increase as well. As a result, there may be a greater differential temperature across the column. Now, if puking develops, the surge of liquid and vapor up and down the column can cause fluctuations in the pressures and temperatures, as well as in the level of liquid in the bottom of the column. 
Also, liquid that's forced out of the top of the column can cause a sudden rise in the level in the receiver. Now, some of the more common methods used to eliminate a flooding problem involve temporarily decreasing the feed rate, the reflux rate, or both to reduce the amount of liquid in the column, and decreasing the bottom temperature to reduce the flow rate of vapor up the column. In extreme cases, it may even be necessary to shut down the column so that the problem can be corrected. If the feed rate to a distillation column is too high, overloading and flooding can occur. But the performance of a distillation system can also suffer if the feed rate is too low. For example, if the feed rate to the column in this system decreases, the level of condensed overhead vapor in the receiver and the level of liquid in the bottom of the column will start to drop. As a result, less liquid will be available for reflux and for circulating through the reboiler. If the levels continue to fall, control devices will reduce the takeoff of overhead product and bottoms product. To correct a low feed rate problem, the cause of the problem has to be identified. If a feed line blockage is detected, it must be cleaned out so that the feed rate can be restored to normal. If an instrument reading seems unusual, it should be reported. In the meantime, the feed rate may have to be controlled manually. In addition to feed rate problems, feed temperature problems can also affect some distillation systems. For example, the temperature of the feed entering this column should be close to the temperature at the feed tray. If the temperature of the feed is much higher or lower than the temperature at the feed tray, product separation will be disturbed. Problems can also occur if the feed mixture is contaminated with water or other foreign material. Depending on the temperatures in the column, water could vaporize and contaminate the overhead product, or settle to the bottom of the column and contaminate the bottom's product. Many of the problems that affect a distillation system can occur during startup. For that reason, operators should be on the lookout for problems such as improper feed rates and temperatures, instrument failures, and residue buildup in feed and product lines. In vacuum distillation systems, operators should also watch for leaks. A vacuum leak will cause changes in the temperatures and pressures in the column, which can reduce the efficiency of the system or stop the distillation process altogether.